Hey YouTube, nervous about flying? Yeah, me too. But I have good news. Knowledge will set you free. Here are airplane facts that every nervous flyer needs to know. Please don't judge my wrinkly pocket. I'm a bad ironer. <laughs> right out of the gate, let's talk about aircraft durability. Personally, this one gets me the worst, and I'm guessing that I'm not alone. Look, I'm certainly no aerospace engineer. I have no idea what these aircraft can handle. Every bump of turbulence, I think the wing is gonna rip off the fuselage and we're gonna spiral down to our imminent doom. It's stressful. But it turns out that these metal birds are super resilient. Car companies make their vehicles seem extra safe by showing crash tests in commercials. But you never see the rigorous tests that airplanes go through. Here are some of the wild highlights of what planes are subjected to before they're stamped for approval by the airlines. First, there's the wing flexibility test. The plane's wings are bent to varying degrees, sometimes all the way to 90 degrees. Eventually, they're bent until they snap. Engineers do this to find their breaking point. And here's a calming fact. That breaking point requires far more force than any plane has ever experienced in actual flight. Wings are crazy strong, and they're designed to bend and bounce. Up next is the ingestion test, better known as the bird strike test. Small birds flying into one of the plane turbines can cause the engine to stall or explode. So engineers in the testing facility will simulate a bird strike to see how the plane would respond to a live bird. They've developed, and I'm being totally serious here, a high speed chicken gun which will fire a whole deceased chicken at the engines to make sure that they can jamba juice the chicken's body without skipping a beat. Look, I'm glad that they're making sure that these engines can handle some random bird, but I have to say that this test is pretty foul. Boom! After the bird Vitamix test, the plane moves on to the extreme temperature and altitude test. Planes are brought to extremely hot and cold climates, as well as very high and low altitudes to make sure they can function normally in these extreme circumstances. Then there's the brake test. Planes are loaded to their maximum weight and then equipped with worn out brake pads. The plane is then brought to take off speed before it hits the brakes to come to a complete Tokyo Drift style stop. Pop quiz, hotshot! <laughs> there are thousands of commercial planes in the sky. Why do you think that almost all of them are painted white? See if you can guess the correct answer in the comment section below and stay tuned till later in the video to see if you're right. This next one is actually super comforting. Commercial planes can fly safely with just one engine, and they can land without any. It always feels like the engines are the only thing that's actually keeping the plane in the sky, but really, they're only just part of the equation. Engines provide thrust, and thrust is important, which is why I'm still single. <laughs> but commercial airplanes are designed to work just fine with the thrust of only one engine. And if both engines go out? Well, the plane doesn't just fall like a stone. Planes with malfunctioning engines work the same way as a glider does. According to commercial pilot Lim Hing, quote, all aircraft can glide to a safe landing, but the degree of distance flown varies, end quote. For instance, in 2001, Air Transit Flight 236 lost all of its power over the Atlantic Ocean, which is an absolute nightmare. But the pilots were able to glide the craft to a safe landing at a nearby runway 75 miles away. And what's crazy is that the plane even had to circle around the runway because it had too much altitude by the time it arrived. But the odds of both engines going out on a commercial aircraft are less than one in a billion flight hours. Their engines are very reliable. Do you ever worry that some maniac on a flight is going to go bonkers and decide to open the emergency exit mid-flight? The side of the plane rips open and you and your half-eaten pretzels get sucked out into the abyss? Yeah, I worry about that too. <laughs> well, we have good news. There is no way that this could happen. Not only because of the mechanical security systems, but because of physics. During the flight, there is over a ton of pressure around the door, keeping it locked in place. For a person to open it, it would be like bench pressing a car. If there is just one thing that you glean from this video, 
make it this. Turbulence is not a safety concern. In its most simple sense, turbulence is a disturbance in the air, analogous to the movement of waves and sea currents. At low altitudes, as air flows over man-made structures and natural terrain, the airflow is disrupted and that causes the air above and around the structure to become turbulent. So if you take off or land from an airport close to a mountain range, you're more likely to experience turbulence during and shortly after takeoff. At high altitudes, turbulence is caused by weather conditions that create pressure differentials that disrupt the airflow. When you're on a plane that goes through turbulence, what's actually happening is that the craft is following the direction of the turbulent air. Remember, planes are built to withstand extreme turbulence, and in the case of risky air, the pilot will just navigate around the worst parts or slow down enough to safely pass through. This next one is probably something you've heard before, but it's true. Flying is one of the safest ways to travel. According to David Ropeek, a risk communication professor over at Harvard, your odds of an abrupt end in a car accident are about one in 5,000. By contrast, the odds of meeting your maker due to an airplane accident are one in 11 million. You're far more likely to get struck by lightning at some point in your life, which is a one in 13,000 chance. Oh, hey, Aurora. What are you doing here? The issue is that we're influenced by our availability bias. Availability bias is defined as the human tendency to think that examples of things that come readily to mind are more representative than is actually the case. For instance, we all think that shark attacks are a big deal because we hear about it every time a surfer gets chomped. But really, mosquitoes are far more devastating in their body count. The media heavily reports on any time that there's an airplane crash, which is why we think that they happen all the time. Currently, fatal plane accidents only occur once every two million flights. Something that seems to be a top worry for nervous flyers is the risk of a mechanical failure in an aircraft. I know that every time I hear some out of the ordinary sound coming from the plane that I get nice and puckered. <laughs> Something comforting to remember is that, on average, for each hour of flight that a modern plane is subjected to, it receives 11 hours of maintenance. So they really are in tip-top shape. It's answer time! The main reason that aircraft are painted white or light colors is to reflect sunlight and minimize both the heating and potential damage to the airplane from solar radiation. The light is like sunblock for the plane. Something that's counterintuitive is that plane crashes actually have a high survival rate. The National Safety Board has released statistics on aircraft accident survivability. They found that since 1983, more than 95% of passengers survived plane crashes. Again, our availability bias is playing tricks on us here because the media rarely covers non-fatal accidents. Unless, of course, you land that big bird in the Hudson. Then, for some reason, you'll get to do all the talk shows, and Tom Hanks will play you in a biopic that critics widely hailed as unnecessary. Still awesome, though. Here are tips from travel and leisure to help assuage your anxiety while flying. Number one, sit towards the front of the plane. Just like in a bus, the bumpiest ride is in the back. Get a smoother ride and sit as close to the nose as possible. Number two, medicate. Anxiety medications work effectively as sedatives. So the noise and the movement of the aircraft won't register as something to get worked up about. Personally, I find that a nice old fashioned at the airport bar just before takeoff works wonders in abating stress. Number three, this is the easiest one. Much of the trepidation around flying stems from fears of the unknown. By watching this video, you have better educated yourself on air travel, and you're now more prepared to confidently fly the friendly skies. So the takeaway of the video is don't let your nerves get in the way of flying around, seeing the world, and living your best life. Don't worry about a thing, because every little thing is gonna be all right. Let us know in the comment section below how you deal with your flight anxiety. Maybe someone will find your strategy helpful. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and check back soon for a new video. Bye! Oh, hey, Aurora. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> hey, Aurora.
Hey, Aurora, what are you doing here? Oh! But that's fun. That's just good fun.